The four, the four nations, nations flew together, flew together in, harmony. in harmony. I am Long Feng, head of the Dai Li. Boo! Why did you let us talk to the king? <laughs> I missed you, buddy. Yes, Appa's back, everyone. We can all breathe a sigh of relief, I hope. I miss you more than you'll ever know, buddy. Aw. I'm telling you, we should go to the Earth King now and tell him our plan. We're on a roll. One good hour after weeks of trouble isn't much of a roll. Long Feng is in control of the city. Long Feng's still alive? See, Appa should have bitten his head off. What's that you say? This is a kid's show? This is kind of a tough predicament. They basically bet a lot on this plan. I've seen enough of Ba Sing Se, and I can't even see. I don't trust the new positive Sokka. Long Feng brainwashed you, <laughs> Yeah, it is a little bit funny to see that. Sokka's always so cynical. I love Top's reaction to that too. Her level of cynicism, it just feels different. It's not fearful, it's like she just can't be bothered to deal with their crap and she feels confident enough that they can handle whatever is going to come by themselves. It's so refreshing to get that kind of confidence. If you ask me, I think we're just going to sail right in the now. Oops. Surface the air rocks. More coming. Surface the air rocks. <laughs> nice. He just felt it. Wow. <laughs> nice. Sorry. Ouch. Tara is like, honestly, for some reason, it always strikes me that her, her bending ends up being so brutal. Like, they're all powerful, but for some reason, Katara's bending just seems so devastatingly painful. <laughs> like, she's whipping people in the face. She killed those people in the Tales of Ba Sing Se episode. Water blades that just chop things up. She's scary. She's scary. It seems like Toph has the biggest amount of power, like the highest threshold. But a lot of the time, she's like, just breaking projectiles or defending them or something like that. Katara is just slapping people with water and ice. Yeah, see, that was effective, but like, it didn't hurt them. They just kind of got trapped. I mean, maybe they got their legs crushed. I don't know. Uh oh, someone's gonna die. You see? They're dead. They just fell into that ditch. I don't feel right. What's going on? They get poisoned? Maybe he needs his rest? Couldn't have asked Sokka to get out of the way first. Yeah, see? They're here to overthrow you. No, we're on your side. We're here to help. Drop your weapons and stand down. I would not put my weapons down with Feng Long in the room. We're friends, your earthiness. Yeah, I mean, I'll... <gasps> Is it just me or are they willfully cooperating? Because the shackles are made by Earth, so there's nothing holding them. Make sure the Avatar and his friends never see daylight again. You're the Avatar? Oops. Mm. Oh, it's the, the bear. Seems to like him. I'll hear what he has to say. Yes, I love that. I wanted to talk about this, but it was a little bit too depressing. But this episode kind of makes it two halves of the whole. When you encounter animals in life, the way you treat them and the way you think about them shows a lot about who you are and the way you think. If you're someone who is mainly kind or virtuous out of a fear of consequences or out of the desire to get things from others, then at times when you don't need to be nice, your actual qualities will come out. And unfortunately, that often means mistreating animals because animals basically are helpless. There's no real recourse they have if you mistreat them. But I'm glad we get a positive flip side of that. At least for me, as someone who I consider myself an animal person, if someone else treats animals well, I, I immediately feel like, okay, this is someone I can connect with on some level. When I was living in Seoul, I went to my friend's house and I couldn't really communicate with the family that well, but I remember his cousin said she instantly liked me because I got along well with her dog. And I understood exactly what she meant, because if you're going to treat this small animal with a lot of care and love, then, you know, you probably have something going on beyond just, like, scheming and manipulation and, and those human traits. For the record, it's not just animals. I think the animals are just a symbol of how a person would treat another person if they know they can get over on them or exert some kind of control over them or something like that. There's a great book called The Philosopher and the Wolf about a philosophy professor who owns a real-life wolf. And one of the things he talks about in that book is the idea that primates have this scheming brain where they kind of hide their motives and if they have any evil, it's it, it's buried and it comes out in opportune moments. Whereas animals, at least non-primate animals, are a little more direct in their conflict. It's like with my dog, if I'm walking him and we meet another dog and they start barking at each other, my dog will look like he's ready to kill. But then you walk five feet and like he's just forgotten about the whole thing. He doesn't hold grudges, he's not like plotting, at least as far as I know. They don't scheme, they don't stab you in the back. And I think that's part of why it's so painful, like in the last episode, to watch these animals get hurt. Because it's like, they're so innocent, they don't understand this, this thing that's happening. Why is someone hurting me when there's no conflict? The Earth King saying that, I'm like, okay, this is someone we can talk to. There's a war going on right now. 
A secret war? That's crazy. Oh, he really knew nothing about that? You're playing right into your own destruction. I have to trust my advisor. Seems like he has some doubt, but it also seems like he's sort of weak-minded. Wait! I can prove he's lying! Yes, Sokka the Brain. Long Fang said he's never seen a sky bison. Ask him to lift his robe. I was thinking that. I'm like, does he have any bite marks on his feet? I didn't say anything. Right there! Up a bit in! Well, I suppose there's no way to prove where those marks came from. Get up his teeth. Of course there is! Or just yeah, get up. I said that wrong. <laughs> yep. The glee. Yeah! Wow. But it doesn't prove this crazy conspiracy theory. I suppose this matter is worth looking into. <laughs> you have an intense fever. Clean water to drink. What, no tea? A little waste. What the hell, man? That was so uncalled for. He's such an angsty teen. It's okay, still got my positive attitude. The Dai Li must have known we were coming and destroyed the evidence. Part of me really hopes that what you're telling me about this war isn't true. I wish it wasn't. Seems like the Earth King is not a bad guy. It seems like actually a lot of this is happening because he's too open. He just listens to whoever is closest to him. And like whatever the last thing he heard, that's just what he goes with. And I feel like that kind of person, they attract opportunists. And that feels very real to me. Because I, I know a lot of people, they really want to be good. They want to do the right thing. And they're a little bit too afraid of standing up to things. Because like they're afraid of offending people. They want everything to be harmonious and friendly. And I think that's a good ambition. But I think like you can't safely establish that without also having a strong backbone. Where you can kind of lay boundaries. A while back I said something like, you can't give from a place of weakness. And I think the same thing kind of applies here. Like, if you want kindness, you also have the have to have the strength to enforce that kindness or to say no to things. Otherwise, you're not really kind, you're just kind of weak. And the king maybe thinks of himself as being kind and reasonable, but actually he's just easily coerced. So it doesn't really help anything. Oh wow, is he dreaming of himself on the throne? I'm not tired. Relax, Fire Lord Zuko. Just let go. What is happening? Do not listen to the blue dragon. So it's voiced by Azula and Iroh. And it's the two sides, like, devil angel thing. Sleep just like mine. Help me! So just my first thoughts on that dream. We have the two sides that are always in conflict for Zuko. The kindness of his mother and Iroh versus the malevolence of the Fire Lord and Azula. I think something is waking up in him, which is this other side of his personality that he's, he's starting to give more power to. The darker side of him doesn't really want to let that emerge because if it does, then everything he thinks he has will crumble. It's really interesting that he was on the throne and didn't have a scar. Maybe that's how he traditionally thought of himself, like as healthy, powerful Fire Lord Zuko. I'm not sure. It's a drill. A giant drill made by the Fire Nation. Surely you don't believe these children instead of your most loyal attendant. Uh-oh, game's up. Arrest Long Feng. <laughs> I like how even they're surprised. Like, really? <laughs> we did it? Looks like Long Feng is long gone. Oh, yeah, I've been waiting to use that one. Should have kept waiting. A solar eclipse is coming. That's the day we need to invade the Fire Nation. Honestly, I love this Earth King. He's exceeded my expectations. Because you can just feel he's, he's, he's good. Like, he has goodness. But yeah, he just lacks that conviction. The animal thing is such a nice touch. I feel like it's such a nice symbol of that. Like, being kind to his pet. You know, it like gives him a nice softness. You can either sit back and wait for that to happen, or take the offensive and give yourself a fighting chance. Very well. Good man. This is General Howe. He's the leader of the Council of Five. Hold on a second, though. I feel like the whole th the, the whole place has got to go. You got to clean house because, well, like no one knew about Long Feng, Feng Long. If I'm the king right now, I'm like, I don't trust any of you people. Long Feng intercepted our letters from home? That's just sad. And <laughs> this scroll was attached to the horn of your bison on the Dai Li Oh, it's, capture. oh, that's right. It's, uh... It's from the Eastern Air Temple. A small fleet of water tribe ships led by Hakoda. It is sad. That's great. You are now at war within your own mind and body. But when you come out of it, you will be the beautiful prince you are always meant to be. Hmm. It's nice to be reminded of that. I always appreciate it when people point out to me the big picture, which is like, this is a stage you're at, and you're like just trying to go to the next stage. And it's going to be tough, but just stick it out, you know? It's noble. It's always cool to realize that the suffering of that is not permanent. It's just like something you're going through right now, and it's something you 
probably have to go through at some point. So it's better to just go through it and power through to the, <laughs> the end. Like instead of you're beautiful the way you are, I know it's like, it's like, no, it's going to be hard. You're going to go through some stuff right now, but it'll be worth it. You know, it's a cool message. We have to split up. If we're going to invade the Fire Nation, you need to be ready. Katara, I... All right, who's ready to get going on <laughs> a little meta-only man trip? Yeah. There are three female warriors here to see you. They're from the island of Kiyoshi. That's Suki! Oops, I guess I'm staying. I'm really gonna miss you guys. Me too. Yeah. Me too. I'm gonna miss the gang. <gasps> Great. Aww. That's enough! The heck was that? What is the meaning of that? He touched. He had a dream where he was the avatar, and then he touched his scar. I don't know. I don't know. A little positive thinking works wonders. And when we get back, Suki's waiting for me. Girls are waiting for us. <laughs> Thanks, positive attitude. Positive thinking, Sokka. I like work it. Out perfectly. From now on and forever. Something's about to go wrong, though. Dinner. That looks good. The Dai Li remains loyal to you. Right. It's not that easy. One loudmouth little brat. Oh, I forgot about these guys. It is with the highest honor that I welcome our esteemed allies, the Kiyoshi Warriors. We are <gasps> no! servants. Crap. Damn, that was an awesome twist at the end. I love that. It took me a minute to get that, but... Ugh. So what happened to Suki? Oh man, don't tell me Sokka lost another girlfriend. Well, he still got five more, so it's okay. What can I say? This Ba Sing Se plotline is just the gift that keeps on giving. It's interesting that one of the finer points of the show has been their travels and their adventures, but it's been nice to really take root in this city and let things play out there. It really allows a story structure to develop, which is really cool. I'm very invested in the fate of the city and the people in it. If you're seeing this, that means this is a standalone episode. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.